to my left is Littleton Common, or to my left is Littleton Common, to my right is Broughton Center. Straight ahead is Land of the Airheads. Oops, sorry, uh, fine residents of Air, Massachusetts. Well, behind me, or now straight dead ahead of me, is the Forge. Forge Village, to be exact. And this is, this is Route 225, I think. That's what it is. And this video starts us off down Route 225 here in the hometown of Groton, Massachusetts. Plenty of neat things, like there's a barn over here to my left, and, or a garage, or whatever. And there's some fields over here. To my right, I used to call that the haunted house. I don't know why, because we never went over there to investigate, you know, like, I never got an opportunity to meet the neighbors who lived there, so my imagination ran wild, and so I just called it the haunted house. And whenever I dreamt of that place, whenever I dreamt of that property, it was always spooky and abandoned and haunted and stuff. But it's, you know, just like comparing. Just like comparing. Comparing my crazy, wacky, wild world of dreamland to the real world is a lot like, to me, comparing the dark world to the regular high world. In the Super Nintendo Entertainment System game, it was the SNES game the Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. Basically, there was a dark world, and it somewhat mirrored the regular world, but things were a little different, you know, and stuff. So, in my dreamland world, there's a lot of nothingness to my right. It's just kind of trees and vegetation and whatnot. But that, what I called the haunted house, was basically, it's an abandoned property and there's nothing really there, it's just it's spooky. To my left is Dorothy's Place. That's the street I grew up on. But straight ahead is basically more of Route 225. So we're here in the hometown, basically. That being rotten of the Massachusetts variety. What is the purpose of the video? I don't really know. I'll try to think of a meaningful topic. Let's see. Okay. Some Aspies, not all, but I know I'm a particular... I fit this description. Sometimes people with Asperger's Syndrome advertise themselves as being less formal and less favorable people than what they really are. Like, they might think that they're rude or something, or, you know, they're always constantly interrupting people and stuff. And that makes people wonder, is it the Asperger's or could it be what they've been taught? And it's kind of a blurry line because it's like a pet peeve where somebody goes, nonsense, I have three kids with Asperger's and they, know, they all know how to say please and thank you and they all know, or, you know, they all know how to be empathetic and how to sympathize and don't use Asperger's as an excuse. This always gets me upset because I don't know, it, it's like, another thing that bugs me is, oh yeah, that's the sweetest person, uh, oh yeah, she's really sweet, and blah, blah, blah. I'm thinking, like, uh, am I sweet? I start having doubts about myself, about my own level of kindness. So when I hear other people, you know, give mention of, 
somebody's very sweet person, I get kind of jealous. And my phone rang. Hello? Well, guess what? This video ends in about six and a half minutes, and I can start walking back to the property. And when the video stops itself at the end of it, uh, I can turn the camera off and we can go. Before that, I'm more like I'll be back there by that. I'm uh, the opposite direction of the junction of 119 and, one, and 220. Well, the opposite direction of the junction of 225 and 119. I'm kind of the other way. And I'm going to turn around. Okay. Bye. That was my phone call. Uh, my ride is going to leave, so I wanted to be cheap and conserve gas and fuel costs. But yeah, oh yeah, that's, whenever I hear, she's, she's a very sweet person. Uh, she has a very big heart. I start to have doubts about either how sweet or generous I can be, and also have doubts about how sweet and kind my own family is. And, and, and it's like, I, I find myself mimicking in my mind, back of my head, in my mind I'm going like, mm, a sweet person, she's like a big heart. Oh yeah, I can be sweet too. And then I start, I start going, oh yeah, or oh yeah, I can be sweet too. Watch. And, and I turn it into a competition rather than being happy for the person that's said to be sweet. You think she's a very sweet person. She has a big heart. Yeah. Oh yeah, two can play at that game. I can be sweet too. Watch. Bet I could be even sweeter than her. It's like so. It's the no, 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 you got it all wrong. You're turning it into a competition. That's kind of like, oh, our company raised, uh, when a competing firm or business raises a certain amount of money for a charitable cause, and then your company tries to compete with the other company by raising even more money for the same cause, you're being charitable because you're trying to prove that you're more charitable than the other person is. So when you try to engage in generosity or hospitality services, but you're doing so to try to outstage another person, how generous are you really? I'm often a victim of this. It's very common, especially in the corporate world, for one company to go, we raised this much money for homeless blah blah. In another company, usually often a competing business within this same industry goes, well, we raised even more money for that cause. This is my family. The video is down to 245 left. So this property is all woodland and dreamland. In, in the dreamland version of the street, this property here doesn't really exist. It's just trees and stuff. It's kind of like a clearing in, amidst a lot of trees. This property here is is just kind of um, that's usually a house a little closer to the street, closer to Dorothy Place Street. The upper floors in that apartment are haunted. The left one by possessed by poltergeists, and the right one possessed by ghosts that just jump out at you. 
Um, this is the duplex, and that house exists, but it's it's a red house. It looks kind of like something you'd find out a strawberry shortcake or something. Not that I ever even saw a single episode of it. This house down here gets close to the possessed forest behind me. That's very spooky and creepy. Uh, there's an entrance, and then this trail sort of veers off, takes a 90 degree curved turn. A curved 90 degree turn, and then it just everything gets really spooky. So that's what's down there. This property, the house, is much bigger and taller, and it's red. And this building here is a five to six story high rise. In the center, that is. I tried moving into the right apartment one time in Dreamland. Uh, and it's the duplex that some guy inside the side we lived in. This apartment here is possessed by ghouls that jump out at you in the middle of nowhere. And this is haunted by poltergeists. In dreamland, that is not in real life. So if you're living in these apartments, please don't feel any need to move out. Anyway, coming at you live from the hometown, this is Mark Smith uh, in Groton of the Massachusetts variety from the uh, northeastern crown of the United States, that being New England. This is Mark Smith signing off today on Saturday, August 6th, 2011.